All right, Coyote. So I think we need to talk about what everybody wants to know. How close were you to actually getting chomped by that tiger shark? Fire! A fire on the mountain. What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome to another episode of Base Camp. Now, this one's going to be a little bit different because instead of reviewing an old episode on the Brave Wilderness channel, we're gonna review the new series that just launched, Blue Wilderness. It's out, it's finally out. We've the been, first two episodes. <laughs> we've yeah. been developing this for a very, very long time, yep. and I hope everybody is liking it so far. Just the beginning, but uh, we started out pretty pretty big. Yeah, yeah. yeah tiger pretty... shark big. Nothing's bigger than a two-part Diving with Tiger Sharks episode, which took months to get through post-production. Yeah. It was a big undertaking. Yeah, it was a big story. Well, you know, series launch, we wanted to give a, a nice backstory, yeah. uh, tell everybody what this series is about and we wanted to uh, uh, do start, justice. We want yeah. to start with a big splash. Mm -hmm. Dive into the deep end. I see what you I see what you're doing. <laughs> I see what you're doing there. Now usually we start an episode with some coyote pack artwork, but unfortunately today we don't have any blue wilderness oriented artwork from the pack, which means you guys have a homework assignment. Nice. Everybody needs to work on either making some Blue Wilderness logo art or draw sharks, draw octopus, draw the Loch Ness Monster, whatever it might be, send it yeah. into the PO box so that we can start sharing Blue Wilderness artwork here in the base camp set. Yeah. Nice. And you know, knowing that we may not have artwork for this particular base camp, I didn't make any artwork, but I do have an artifact. Okay. Uh, Mario, I actually, it's, it's right over there by you. Oh, here it Let's is. Grab it. Ooh, what's this, buddy? Oh, do you remember is, that? Is it heavy? It's heavy. It it's might a be expensive. Bit heavy. Yeah, put it back. I do remember this from the manatee segment. That is correct. So this is our very first underwater camera housing, sort of the beginning stages of Blue Wilderness, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Um, which you know it was now almost three years ago. Sure. That we filmed that, but uh, you know. It's, it's sort of a relic now, not something that we're gonna use again, but I thought we could put it up on the wall. and Yeah, it's kind of fun to see this yeah. because the manatee segment, besides being really cool swimming with manatees, it was our first like true underwater segment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it was. And uh, you know, starting with the manatees and leading up to the tiger sharks, there was a lot of baby steps along the way, like not only learning how to film underwater and learning about the different housings, but also getting dive certified, which Mario, you only got dive certified a week prior to yep. swimming with sharks. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yep, I basically went the accelerated route. I got dive certified and Speed then- Speed certification. A few days later, I was on a boat heading to swim with tiger sharks. That's right. And yep. the other different <laughs> aspect is that Coyote went from being in front of the camera to behind the camera. You guys didn't see me behind the camera a lot, but I was getting some of those shots. And yep. Mark took over as a show host. Yep. So tell us, what was it like getting in front of the camera for the first time? in full perspective. Like, you yeah. know you've been on camera before, but yeah. this is from the host perspective. Well, I have to, first and foremost, man, not an easy job by any means at all. Like, I mean, so much respect for all the videos that we've made together, you stepping in front of the camera for the team. Uh, it's not easy to deliver lines, especially when there's like a crowd behind the camera and the boat's rocking and there's so many distractions going on. So sort of keeping your focus becomes a challenge mm -hmm. in itself. But beyond that, it's, uh, it was really humbling. Now having this, you know, the full perspective of all the roles, hopefully um, will not only make me better as a new host, but also a better director for the main series, which speaking of directors, Mario made his directing debut on these videos. Mario, what was it like? <laughs> well, in line with what you said, uh, I now have a better perspective as to the difficulty of being a director. And there's a lot of responsibility that a director feels. Um, you gotta make sure you get all the shots, all the cutaway shots. So as you're filming, I was also thinking of, all right, this is the next thing to, to do. Uh, Mark should say this instead. And <laughs> you know, it's it's difficult, but I certainly appreciated the uh, challenge. Yeah, but you had yeah. fun. I, I know you had fun. Every time you said cut, it was with a yeah. smile on your face. Cut, oh. do it again, do it again. <laughs> now just for audience <laughs> clarification, because a lot of people have written in the comments section on social media, is Mark quitting Brave Wilderness? No. No, Mark's not quitting Brave Wilderness. Blue Wilderness is a show that's gonna be housed on the Brave Wilderness channel. However, we are also creating the Blue Wilderness channel because we're looking to diversify the content on YouTube. Not only through shows like Blue Wilderness and Beyond Dinosaurs, mm -hmm. but also by building new channels. So yeah. sure. hopefully it's just gonna attract more people to the world of animals. Absolutely, this is about being versatile. Mm -hmm. All of us have roles that we could actually intertwine and switch mm -hmm. and just be really good at what we're doing. And you're, yeah. you're gonna be out there again with us under the 
uh, ocean surface, right? We'll see. As long <laughs> as you don't get seasick. Seasick. Yeah. That was the big, big reason. <laughs> and obviously, I can't host everything. And with the idea of diversifying the channel, we want to start plugging different people into different roles mm -hmm. to branch out. Now, yes, I get seasick quite a bit, but I actually didn't get seasick on this voyage. Strangely yeah. enough, like we really had this whole scene planned where it was like, oh, Coyote's gonna be puking over the side. Uh, it's gonna be funny, but. You had the scops patch. Yeah, yeah. If you guys yeah. looked like we were wearing Band-Aids. Those actually keep you from getting seasick. One thing I do have to say, I take a moment to thank Jonathan Bird and his amazing team with Blue World. We yeah. could not have done this production without them. Mm -hmm. um, certainly was the primary factor in keeping us safe and aware for our very first shark encounter. So Absolutely. definitely check out Jonathan's channel right here. He's got Blue World TV, lots of amazing underwater videos. And yeah. I don't think this is gonna be the last time we're gonna work with Jonathan and those amazing guys, so stay tuned. Yeah, they are a goofy bunch of guys that loves diving underwater and just yeah. so much fun. And, and I know one thing that a lot of people noticed and commented on was like, whoa, you guys are doing your first shark episode with no cages? I mean, that was the thing yeah. that I think was really crazy for us and probably anybody out there watching is that we're getting into the water with all these sharks. And most of the time you see people in cages, but this is one of those unique spots in the world that you can go and get in the water sure. with sharks without cages. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's all very calculated. Mm -hmm. We certainly didn't just go off and dive with any sharks. Right. Uh, this yeah. area is a known dive spot. Uh, this occurs year round. And we were with professionals. All right, Coyote. So I think we need to talk about what everybody wants to know. How close were you to actually getting chomped by that tiger shark? Pretty close. Closer than I think anybody would ever want to get with a tiger shark. Yep. A 14 foot <laughs> predator. I know a lot of you have been asking, Coyote, when are you going to get bitten by a shark? Never. Certainly not intentionally, but this this was close. That was close. It was very close. And I, re I distinctly remember underwater after it happened, everybody was looking at each other like, did you see that? And for everyone, I think we got like four different shots. Everyone's like, oh yeah, we yeah. saw. <laughs> so, Good thing all the cameras were rolling. Yeah, the so we have the footage here today. Yeah. Why don't we take a look at all four of those clips okay. and then we can examine just how close things sure. actually got. Sure, perfect. Let's watch it all through once first. Here we go. All right, so big tiger sharks coming around. You're filming, you're filming. Oh, oh. So that was kind of tough because you were blocking the camera there, so you really couldn't see mm -hmm. how close I like how got. I went right yeah. back to like, oh, and I'm just filming now. Oh, that was commitment. I think that was my shot. I think this is Jonathan's shot. Yeah, this is the close one. Ooh. That one you can actually you see, see how, how close I, you got. I really had to pull my arm back, and good thing he, he drifted off to the side. And I just continue to get the shot. And that's your shot. Your, this is your shot. She kind of blocked, but boom. Oh, man. You can definitely see under the shark's nose. Yeah. I had to kind of lose my hold on the camera at one point. Look at you. You're like, you're like. I'll tell you what, my <laughs> heart was <laughs> racing at that point. Like, we know, Coyote. Yeah. <laughs> we know. All right. You know, looking at it in slow motion without the dramatic music from the episode, you know, you, you may not know how close that was, but I think down there in the moment, we all knew. Well, yeah. well here's, here's what happened. What we were instructed is that when sharks come straight at you, you hold your ground, right? The sharks will almost every single time drift off to the left or right. And we yeah. experienced this with all shark species. Like we would stay there and the shark would come at you, come at command, almost like a game well, of chicken, and then it would go whoop. I think this is side. an important point to make too, because when we first got down to the bottom, the sharks are very cautious. They're very apprehensive. They're not like coming in right away and making a beeline for you. Like they're actually gonna scope you out first before mm -hmm. they even think about getting close to the mm -hmm. camera. So actually when you get down there, you're hoping the sharks get closer to you. Right. You try to remain calm and still, so hopefully you can get that epic shot. Right. But inevitably they do get confident and they get closer and closer and closer and closer and well, then the contact comes. And certainly at a point where they're in an experience where they're feeding and they're like, oh, yeah. maybe this person yeah. has something for me. They're gonna come over and check it out. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And that's a great situation or a great example, maybe not so great for you, <laughs> but of uh, that shark coming up, approaching very slowly. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like just going fast and mouth open. It was approaching slowly. And when it bumped into you, you did something where you accidentally touched kind of the bottom of his snout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it was, I think it was like this. Yeah. Because you got caught off guard. Well, he yeah. bounced off the front of the camera and the shark was so close at that point, Let's I couldn't really see what was happening. It was just like, whoa, the shark didn't go to the side. You can see right here. You can see there. The way that, the way that I had put my hand up, because I couldn't see through my mask and you could see all the bubbles in front of me. Once that shark collided with the camera, 
I didn't know where to put my yeah. hand. I couldn't see where I was putting my hand, so I hit the underneath part of his nose, and he came up. You could see his yeah. eye roll back and yeah. the white come over. So the, te the teeth it, come he was, out. He yeah. was ready to bite. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, you just triggered a feeding response. Right. Because the professional feeders, when they actually have the sharks approach, they put the fish underneath their snouts. Right. Because as we know, sharks have the ampullae of Lorenzini, all these receptors around their snout. Mm -hmm. As soon as you touch one of those, they're gonna open their mouth reflexively, right? I should have put the camera into his mouth. You should have. Just, just give him mean, something to eat. I'm just glad you didn't get bit. I mean, what were you thinking in that moment? Explain, because you know, when you're down there, like, you know, after this is all done and we're looking at the footage now, it's easy to be like, oh yeah, yeah. man, it was uh, no big deal swimming with sharks. But like, when you're down there, you are on guard. Yeah, and yep. when you're looking down the little viewfinder of a GoPro camera, underwater, through a dive mask, everything's disorienting. So what I saw was the shark getting that close. In the moment that I was like, oh, it's hitting the camera, I started to move and then those bubbles came up, just like in Jaws or something, like, yeah! <laughs> and I could see down the mouth of that shark and the first thing I just thought was move to the side. You could see I kind of pulled my hands back immediately knowing that like, yeah. oh man, if the shark feels something in its mouth, that's when it's gonna grab and, yeah. and shake itself. Yeah. You know, that, that's a good point. Underwater, during the experience, it seems so much more intense mm -hmm. and, and essentially faster. Mm -hmm. uh, I was behind you uh, when that happened. I got that initial shot, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that perspective. And it was such a quick movement that you did, spinning, turning, shark's gone, back to you. Right. <laughs> and we're just like, that just happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was immediately thinking, oh man, that might be the shot of the trip right there. I better keep the camera going and in frame. And with, with everybody that was down there with us, I think I was the only one that actually got chomped. Well, like we consider it a chomped at, but it was a non-aggressive move mm -hmm. on the shark's part, which was clear yeah. once it went past and it's like, oh, there was nothing here for me to eat. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna circle around again. And, and to be fair, I don't know if we told you this beforehand, but Mario and I, we did a lot of research before we shot this video, mm -hmm. clearly, uh, but we were told by many people like, hey, you may want to reconsider this to be your first shark dive because the sharks do make contact. Inevitably, they do get confident enough to come in and, and test you out. And it's not an aggressive, like, I want to kill you, test you out. It's an aggressive, like, what are, what are you, yeah. man? Like, hey, do you, you have any wanna... fish yeah. for me or something? Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and you know, right after that shark just kind of circled around everyone and went back to feeding. Yeah, yeah, like nothing happened. And, and it is surprising just how easy it is to move such a large animal away from you underwater, which right. here, I'll show you. I, I brought one of my clips. This is this is what ideally you want to happen. This is, uh, yeah, here, here you can see the shark is approaching me. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep your palm down and push the shark away from you. See, there you go, so. Yep, yeah, there you go. And then yeah, just push so you, it away. Yeah, you made your move a lot quicker. I yeah. let the shark run into me, which if I had earlier on been like, I, I mean, my low angle too, I think I was at a disadvantage too, right from the start, yeah. being as low as I was and not really having anywhere to go other than hoping all right, the shark's yeah, going to But yeah, that's exactly, Mark put his hand on top of the shark, mm -hmm. kind of you pushed down. It, it, he didn't trigger that response, mm -hmm. which is reflexive, right? right? Of opening the mouth, yeah. Right. But I have to say, um, I think the big takeaway from all of this is that those sharks are super intelligent and amazing to be around underwater. Absolutely. Like, I, I honestly can't wait to go back and do it again. It was uh, it was fairly surreal to be in the water and then having these massive predators just kind of pass right by you. And at some points you will look at them directly in their eyes mm -hmm. and they're looking back at you, right? And I, yeah, I, I think yeah. you lose sort of like, it's not that you ever lose respect for what those animals are, but you do start to get comfortable in that environment. At first you're like, holy cow, there are sharks everywhere. Yep. And then it'll just be like, oh, you're getting one shot before you know it, you know, three or four sharks are just coming past the side yeah. and you're like, whoa, it's a good thing that nobody got curious and decided to bite onto my leg yeah. at that point. Uh, you know, we will say as well, at, at all times, we were instructed to always have your head on a swivel, right? Mm -hmm. So you're constantly, you're getting a shot, but you're also looking over your shoulder, right? right. If you see one of your buddies, a shark coming from behind, they're not signal. aware, yeah. give them the signal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're always kind of aware and always looking around. Which, what's the shark signal? Shark! shark. How about, what if it's a tiger shark? Big, Big shark. Yeah. <laughs> Run, yeah. swim, whatever it is. But yeah. I mean, this is cool. I think the audience yeah. gets a really great perspective of what it takes to make these underwater videos by us analyzing the scenario and pointing out instances that were almost really pretty catastrophic. Yeah. That's what, you get bit by a tiger shark that far out of the ocean, like, it's game over. It would have been really bad. Yeah. Thankfully, you didn't get bit. 
Close call. Yeah, Very close. about as close as you ever want to get. Yes. But if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to go back and check out the Tiger Shark videos. There's a two-part episode, episode one, right here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, lots more to come from Blue Wilderness. Stay tuned, lots more to come for sure. And don't forget guys, send in your Blue Wilderness artwork to the P.O. Box so that we can start debuting it here on the channel. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mark Vins. I'm Ariel Dakoa. Be brave. Stay, Stay wild. wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. one more time. What did you get? Ooh. Man, that was cool. If you like this episode of Base Camp, make sure to go back and watch the series premiere of Blue Wilderness, where we went face to face with giant tiger sharks. And if you haven't yet, follow us on Instagram so you can keep up with all the behind the scenes action on our latest adventures.